Bonner Lacal, my garden of roses. I apologize if my voice sounds harsher or softer than usual. I'm still getting over whatever has me sick. And I apologize for not putting up any videos yesterday. I'm not good at not working, and so here I am again, pushing out a video. Um, today we're actually here to talk about a story that broke last night on Fox News, but I don't think has gotten any attention other than the usual mainstream media attempting to spin the story against its actual meaning. And that is the story of Mark Warner having extensive contact with a lobbyist for a Russian billionaire, this uh, senator being Mark Warner, the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, he's not the only one who has had contact. Uh, in response to this, mainstream media outlets have been sending you know, quite a loud message trying to say that, oh, but Rev Devin Nunez's staffer, uh, Pashep uh, Patel, sorry, hard name to pronounce, Kashyap Patel, excuse me, had, um, had also attempted to go to London to contact uh, Christopher Steele, but was rebuffed. Uh, however, the story with Mark Warner is very different and paints a very upsetting story about the entire Senate Intelligence Committee. Mark Warner, of course, Senator Warner, is a Democrat, and his involvement with this goes far beyond just trying to contact Christopher Steele directly. No, he has, expo with the text messages exposed, uh, we can see that Mark Warner was going out of his way to have absolutely no paper trail, to be as secretive as possible in order to meet with uh, Christopher Steele, as well as make use of Russian contacts held by the lobbyist uh, Mark Waldman, who is known for his period of time and is a registered Russian agent. Uh, but known for his time uh, attempting for like the last nine years or so, attempting to get a visa for uh, this Russian billionaire whose name I won't even attempt to pronounce at the moment because I know I will fuck it up. But considering uh, Senator uh, Warner's position on as chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, I think this severely compromises his position in leading the Senate's half of the investigations. More so as we see people like Rubio and Burr, people who happen to be part of the Gang of Eight, the Intelligence Gang of Eight, which we've spoken of before, the eight people with the security clearance to view and request any and all completely classified documentation with regards to any operation within the FBI, CIA, or NSA. Uh, Senator Walt, uh, Warner has a lot to account for, and people covering for him don't make this any less impactful. This isn't about one senator having contact with the Russians. This is just like the memo served as a thread to start pulling on, this is another thread to start pulling on because I personally believe our entire Senate Intelligence Committee is compromised, give or take a few uh, Democrats who, or excuse me, give or take a few Republicans who happen to be working against them if effectively powerlessly. Now, this does not mean that the House Intelligence Committee is compromised. No, much to the contrary, I strongly support uh, Representative Nunez, Representative Goodlatte, I think it's actually Goodlatte, but I love calling him Goodlatte, and um, Representative, oh god, what's the third one's name? Uh, Johnson, Representative Johnson, uh, of which Johnson has been all over the media. He's got very close connections with Fox News, which I know people will call him out for, people will 
consider that a mark against him. However, I'll be completely honest, I trust Fox News a slight bit more than any other mainstream media outlet these days, if just to give me a place to start my investigations. I certainly don't use them as, you know, the be-all and end-all of news. But when they say something, they're usually saying something that no other media outlet wants to cover, and they force other media outlets to respond if responding in such a way that is completely manipulative of the situation. For example, attempting to bring up Kashyap Patel's attempt to speak with Christ, uh, Christopher Steele. A situation, mind you, that was completely documented and completely rebuffed, and at this point is only being dismissed by these Democrats because it gives them an arguing point. However, there's no actual evidence, nor has Representative Nunez come out and stated that he had anything to do with Kashyap Patel's attempts to contact Christopher Steele. And at that point, it really brings up questions as to what he was doing, whether or not this staffer is in a compromised position as well, being so close to the chairman of the Intelligence Committee. There is a lot of corruption within our government. I mean, there's there's never been a question about that, right? But at this point, we're starting to see just how deep that corruption goes with the former leaders of the Inspector General's office, such as Sally Yates, producing a 58-page memo in which she essentially says, fuck you, you don't get to investigate the National Security Division of the D Department of Justice, with the... Uh, FBI and the Attorney General's office both being involved in uh, essentially outing one of their own, unmasking essentially, one of their own operatives, one of their own undercover employees, entirely for the purpose of attacking the Trump campaign. When Before he was even president, mind you, this all took place between the end of summer and uh, October 26th of 2016. Uh, we have now Mar Senator Warner, who has Senator Rubio and Senator Burr and a number of others coming out in complete support of him, saying, oh, he told us about this, except the thing they're, they're fucking up with is he told them about it long after it mattered. And they say that it had no impact on their investigation, except there's no evidence it's had no, no impact on the investigation. And the fact of the matter is, he is proven to have compromised himself as being severely biased in this matter, and beyond biased, attempting to secretively go around the direct channels in which the uh, government must operate, especially the Intelligence Committee, which holds oversight over matters like this. But it, it brings up a, a few interesting points I'd like to address. First and foremost, we've been seeing a lot of people retiring, a lot of people resigning from their positions or stating that they won't be uh, running for office. Uh, of recent, I've grown rather, rather nervous about... Um, about uh, Representative Gowdy, Trey Gowdy, because he has seemed to have completely changed tone when it comes to the Russia investigation, as well as with regards to uh, his positions on the memo. A memo, mind, that he assisted in writing and provided information for from the Judiciary Committee. But there are other members, both of the Senate and the uh, uh, house that need to be watched. The two people that I, I, I want to pay attention to ha are, are big no-names, right? However, to me, based on, on the inf in investigations I've been doing, Mark Warner mostly threw up red flags, but didn't actually have any evidence on him up until this point. So having this come out uh, about another member of the G8, of the group uh, Gang of Aids, really does, you know, make me think, well, I should be paying attention to these other people. These other people being Tom Cotton and, um, um, I think it's John Lankford. Uh, let me double check that for you. 
I believe it's John Langford. Uh... James Langford, I apologize. Um, Tom Cotton, James Langford, and Richard Burr. Now, if we see these, uh, if we see one of these three or any of these three people resign in the next few days, it's going to be worth reevaluating them. And I might just do a research project on them for one of my weekly shows because these people. They, they've got a very low profile, and yet they hold a very strong position within the Senate and uh, Re House of Representatives within these investigations. The one who I find extremely puzzling is Richard Burr. Richard Burr, of course, is one of the people who has come out in defense of uh, uh, Mark Warner with regards to his Russian contacts, and make no bones about it, Mark Warner has been making use of Russian contacts during an investigation into whether or not Donald Trump made use of Russian contacts. The hypocrisy runs extremely deep. However, Burr seems to be the one who's constantly coming out in attempts to defend anyone who moves forward, who, who has evidence move forward against them. Now, uh, I mean, when Senator Feinstein recused herself from the uh, Senate Intelligence Community or Committee, excuse me, at the beginning of this year, and he took her place, he was very supportive of her. When Representative Nunez began pushing this memo, he came from the Senate side and began, began arguing heavily about the national security issues and was even seen on Fox News trying to start a fight with, Tom, with, uh, with uh, Tucker, Tucker Carlson that is, over the fact that Tucker Carlson is apparently violating the national security of the United States. We keep seeing him show up, and I believe there needs to be more investigations done into him, but at this point, investigations need to be had, private investigations, if that's the best we can do, and honestly, places like 4chan, 8chan, and the rest have really dropped the ball in their own investigating. These investigations need to be done. We need to know just how deep this rabbit hole goes, just how many members of the Intelligence Committee, just how many members of the Judiciary Committee, just how many people connected to the Clinton campaign who hold elected positions are entrenched with their own Russian oligarchical con uh, uh, contacts, which they have used to attack De uh, Republicans and Trump specifically over having Russian contacts. This story just keeps unfolding further and further, and I'm going to keep doing stories about it. I know a lot of you would rather me do stories that are a little bit lighter, but this is very important to me because I do consider myself uh, a bit of a patriot. I love my country. Uh, I am chauvinistic in that way, and if that makes me a bad person, then a bad person I will be. But I will research until the evidence shows me I'm wrong. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bonsoir. Mm -hmm.